This is Terry McDade, aka the Pirate Hunter, and this is a build review of my Quetz Field Kitchen with Personnel from the Red Army Collection in 135th scale, kit number MQ35038. This kit, I it would be easier to show you the problems on it if I still had the instructions, so, but they don't. Uh, when I cleaned up a bunch of the boxes out here and threw a whole bunch of stuff away, apparently they went with it. Or I will find them as soon as I get done with this because it would be a lot easier on the instructions to show you the problems with this kit. And there is several. So let's get into it as well as I can on this and see what I can uh, show you. On, we'll start with the box here and show a couple items on the box. On the box, it shows two platforms on it. This one folded up and this one down, which looks almost like it slides out. But what they give you in the kit is two of these that are you can either put down or fold it up. I put one folded up and one down, as you can see on it. Now, on this side they have two ears where that match the ears on the platforms there but if you try to put the platform down with the ears there it doesn't line up on it so I just put this one up on this side and put this side down now on the trailer hitch here if you look at the trailer hitch here it shows it vertical but you look over here at the towing eye and it shows it vertical also yet in the directions when you're building this it will show this horizontal on it and this horizontal it will show this this one it shows it different configurations on it so what I finally did I just said okay I'll put them both horizontal on it. Now, this leg here that they supply in the kit for the support does not reach the ground when you put the tires and the front support under it. So what I did is I just took a couple pieces of tubing and styrene and made a couple supports because on the frame there is one hole that is open but it is over on this side for the support that goes in that they show here. So I just put a couple of supports in it because this thing I believe is a, I want to say a 200 liter uh, boiler in there if I remember right from a uh, copper kettle on this from reading that and that's a lot of weight for one little thin support and so I put two underneath it because I don't have a lot of, didn't have a lot of directions on this. Now the front support for the tongue of the trailer has two little tiny holes up here on it. Like there's supposed to be pins on this that go in, but there's no pins for it to go in on it when you cut it off there because you have to cut it off where it attaches here on it. And it is entirely different than the one you have here. So I just took and there's no brace in this, so I just took a piece of uh, styrene that I had and just cut a uh, brace out going down on this. Now, if you look at the build itself, where the top of the cans are, you can see how far down, how close they are to the top. And this figures in because this is where you are supposed to put one axe and one hatchet on this thing. And I said I wish I had the directions here for it. But you have three legs, three supports on this that it gives you no location on the side of this on where to put them. In the drawing here, this thing is really tall if you look as you look at it. But if when you look at the build on it, see if I can get it to stand up. If you look at the build on it, it is really relatively kind of short on it. 
So, and these actually come down to right about where my thumbnail is, the edge of my thumbnail is on this. They're really long on it. And underneath this you have three little tiny sets of lines where you connect to on it. But you can't, if you go as high as they are along, if you look at this, that sticks the top of the cans up over the top of the boiler. So I just said, okay, we'll just figure out approximately where it goes on the tires. Looks good, and we'll just put it on there. On this, on the bottom, where the axles, where the springs and the axle goes on, you have two little marks. One there, one there, and then you have one here and one here that give you where to line up your spring pack on it. Okay, no problem with that. And you really don't have, you have a little tiny, couple little tiny marks on where to put your axle in on this. So you can pretty much figure it out by the marks on where it goes. But there is a problem with the axle and we'll come back to that on it. Now this right here is apparently, I'm guessing, where all the ashes fall and everything else. Now this is on the sprue map, but nowhere on the instructions does it show where, when, and where, and how to put this on. So I just figured out that's where it went, glued it, and put it in there. But when you do, since it doesn't call it out before, make sure you put that on before you put this on. It's a lot easier to do it from the top than fit it from the bottom. Okay, now we'll get to the boiler here. These boilers, this boiler and this box, they're all five pieces. Now, where they go on the framework that goes right under here, the solid sheet that goes on this, you have some little uh, alignment marks on it, little alignment lines on it, I guess, of raised plastic. But when you're trying to put this together, you can tweak it a little bit. Now, what I did is I put this one, I built this one on top of this. And so I thought, okay, the next one I do, I will build it separate, put it on, and that's what I did with this. But you have a problem here. On this, when you, this great system right here, where the wood goes for the, spare wood goes for the boiler, to heat the boiler, has a pin on each end of it. Uh, you can see that right there. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know if you can on it. But right there on the end of it, it has a tab sticking out. Well, I glued these on, and then I went to fit this. Well, when you do that, it sticks it way out over the front of this. So I ended up cutting the tabs off on this end of it. Uh, what if I had it to do over again, if I built one of these again, I would just put the two boxes on then I would just cut the tabs a little bit on each side so it looked a little better to fit down in there. Now on this, on the sides and the lid and this, you have no, oh I got a hair there, how about that? That's normal on this paint job. You have all the straps on it where the hinges are supposed to go but they don't line up with each other. There's a gap in between them. A pretty good sized gap between these and on the hinges on it and on this side. So what I did is I took just a few little pieces of uh, sheet of uh, lead and put them on there and lined it up that way. Now, the tools you have for this, and I didn't put them on, are a hatchet, an axe, and a shovel. They, where they are supposed to fit, the shovel is supposed to fit someplace across the front of this box, which I think is metal, I'm not sure on it. And each one of, one, the hatchet fits on one side and the axe fits on the other side of this. So that's where they're supposed to go. But if you try to put them on where they say to go, you can't put them on where they go because they won't go there. Because of the height of this. So there's a problem with that also. 
Now you could take and probably mount them at an angle on this side or kind of vertical on this or down or some ever, however you wanted to do it. Uh, the shovel I didn't put on here because I don't like it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will just get another one I think out of uh, one of my spares boxes and put it on afterwards. Now the t uh, tires and rims, okay, and the axles. Uh -huh. These you have to be careful with because this axle, when you go to fit this rim on that axle, it's not going to fit. What happens is this axle is just a little bit too big or the center hole is a little too small. So what you have to do to try to put it on is twist it which is a really good way to twist the end of an axle off. Been there, done that. So what I did, I thought, well, I'll just take my X-Acto knife with a really sharp new blade, and I'll just spin it just a little bit to cut that out. Well, what I did is I didn't realize that this, this hole in here is like a hourglass. It is bigger on both ends, and it has a little narrow center section in it. So when you take that little narrow center section out, all of a sudden you got something that fits a wheel on there that looks like it's from a clown car out of the circus with the wheels uh, wobbling on it and everything else. So what I did is I took and took a piece of my uh, round styrene rod. I had a little hole in it. Measured it. To fit in the measured one that fit in here pretty close. Oh, drilled this open. Then I took and measured the axle on this and drilled the hole out on this to fit. So when the wheels go on, see if I can get it on here. When the wheels go on, it's got paint on it, so I'll have to clean it a little bit. But when the wheels go on, I said I have to clean the paint off. It fits really tight now. When the wheels go on, they go on tight and stay tight. And speaking of paint, I shot this with, it calls for a 4BO. Ignore everything behind there, that's works in progress eventually. I shot it with the 4BO Russian Green out of this MIG Smart Set from Russian World War II. And the problem I had with that is I mixed it up and I have a paint shaker that will shake up to 3,000 strokes a minute. And I shook, uh, diluted it with water, which is what I dilute with. And I shook it and I was sitting there for a couple of minutes before I was ready to pour it in the gun to shoot it. And when I looked, that green had turned the neatest shade of brown you ever wanted to see. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute here. So did I grab the wrong one? And it says, no, 4BO on it. So, and it comes out green. But if you thin, I don't know if I thinned it a little bit too thin on it. And it just separated really bad. But this paint, I've, this is the first, I've used this MIG uh, Smart Set once before when I did a, um, 148 ATST uh, that I camouflage painted that had been captured by the rebels after the fall of the uh, Death Star and I didn't have any problems with it but this time around I definitely have had some issues with this paint on this it separated really really badly and I ended up taking and putting what had separated back in the bottle, which did thin it a little bit. But thinning this, I had to be really careful, even on what was back in, because I hadn't mixed a whole lot. Um, I had to just leave it a little bit thicker than what I normally do with uh, the Vallejo or the Tamiya or Model Master. So that's why I, this is shot in the Russian 4BO green. I don't know well you can see it, the light's not that great in here. But I took and finally said, okay, I'm not going to fight with it anymore. I shot the bottom of it in olive drab. It's a fairly close mix on it. 
Alright, so that was the problem with that. Now on the smokestack, you can put it where it is either where they're cooking, setting their part ready to cook, or you can lower it down, put just one on where it's lowered down for travel. Well, now where this smokestack attaches, right here on this, there is a raised round uh, portion on it that there's no hole in the bottom of this this portion to fit on it now there's a hole in the top but not on the bottom so if you try to fit it on it it leaves a pretty good gap right down in here so I just cut it off and put it on there so this is where it's at I've still got to figure out how to weather this thing because obviously where this is going to have through the smokestacks and where the heater the boiler is and everything else will be have a lot of issues where uh, heat's been in there and discolored it and this. So that's the next update that will be on this is when it's finished being painted. Now as I said before uh, final opinion of this kit this would make a neat addition to somebody doing where you're doing a Russian setup in this and you might be able to research it more than I did to find out exactly what the story is on the trailer hitch and the eye hitch on it for different things. Um, would I recommend this for a beginner? No. No, I wouldn't. This has got a lot of issues with it that things just don't... You have to sit down and kind of just grouse creek field repair it to get it to fit because right here, if you look right here, where it shows this is where one of the hatchets or axes set. So you look at how long this is as compared to how long this is. So there's a lot of different issues on this and it shows how much taller, if you look how tall it is through here as compared to the kit. So there is a bunch of issues, different things you're going to have to deal with on it. Uh, for anybody that builds models, it's nothing that you can't overcome on it. Now, Maquette also makes what is called a high-tech kit. And they've got one of a self-propelled German gun that I just, I, I think I'm going to buy it. I, the only thing I can figure is I must be a glutton for punishment. And it feels good when I quit beating my head against the wall. Because based on this, I, I, where it says high tech on that, it's going to be interesting. So I pretty much decided where, that I'm going to buy that just to see what it's like. Uh, the other parts of this build uh, are all coming together. That stuff all back behind this is the generator build. That I'll do a build update on that. That's been another interesting project. That... Uh, the holes in the uh, PE that comes with it are the wrong size holes. They don't fit on things. They're way too small. So I'll do a build update on that and do the final update on the train car. That was done. Uh, I've got the you see the boards in the background on the right there that I'm trying to decide which one to do. I'll do an update on that whole car and the issues I had with the boards hopefully in the next week or so because I'm no longer working two jobs. So hopefully I can get all this to you in the future. So for right now, this is Terry McDade, a.k.a. The Pirate Hunter. And to quote the great Jerry Springer, Take care of yourself and each other. And one other thing that I forgot. Take and go to Facebook and check out the Kursk 75, 75th Anniversary Group Build that's on Facebook. And the group build that is being sponsored by Nigel Wells and Cohen C. Uh, there is a lot of really good builds being put on there. Uh, a lot of really good information if you're on doing models. The builds are fantastic looking. So go check it out. And until the next time, have a nice day.